Hey folks, welcome back. So we just got done with a couple of instructional videos there. That was a whole lot of talking and no action. So now it's time for action. We're going to go kind of wrap up some of these, uh, whatever this is, White Run, I think it's called. The White Run quest that we got earlier on. So here's one of them here right now, guys. Now something that came up in a question, and thanks so much again for the questions, guys. But um, Skyrim is a lot of randomization going on. So... You know, this might say find Amran's family sword inside some completely different dungeon. So folks, if that's the case, don't sweat it. Um, now, some of them are absolutely fixed. For example, we're going to do... Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do the Blessing of Nature. Uh, that one's going to be the same no matter what. That's what's considered more of a fixed quest. But some of these other ones, you know, that, that different NPCs might give you, they can absolutely vary on what, where they take you. Not only that, they can actually vary on what you're going there for. So, you know, one might say kill the bandit leader at whatever. And then, you know, another playthrough, that exact same quest giver might say kill the kill the Forsworn at something. Uh, I mean, it won't be that drastic. It won't be out of region. But um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It, th they can, it can change things up. For example, the first local quest I got was from an innkeeper and by the way you can get the same local quests uh, the bounties for the Jarl you can get those at innkeepers or you can get those at the town stewards disrespect the law and you disrespect cool the moon all right so I'm gonna go oh yeah this is a new one so guys that's a completely separate video that's quite a quest and we don't have anywhere near yeah, that's going to be later. There's a lot of warping around with that one, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a later game video for that reason. I want to get it all done in one fell swoop, but wow, that, that's really involved. There's a way to actually make the character dance, but every time I do it, I can never figure out what button I accidentally pushed to make it happen. So anyway, um, yeah, back, getting back to our innkeeper well here. Enough, um, ask them if they have any rumors that will always lead... Sonda. Or no, it's anyway, what do you need? both, actually. I'm looking for work, got any leads, that will get you the Jarl quest. And these can be not always Jarl quests, they can be anything. Uh, here, since I already cleared the, the last Some bounty the for the Jarl... Okay, kill the bandit leader located at that keep. Now sometimes, you know, early game, you're going to get Silent Moon's camp... You can get that Need keep I just else? got. Just Sometimes it's the halted steam camp or something or other, or something mm -hmm. like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, so again, if you're following along in my walkthrough, and you know we both talk to the same quest giver at the same time in the game, and yours is completely different, uh, oh, that's to be expected. It. Not only that, every time you play Skyrim, it's a different game. So now, guys, what I kind of want to do is go do some questing. So one of them is right here, and one of them is right here, and that actually works out, because I have a route I like to run uh, for loot, for all sorts of good stuff. It's a good, fun route. And um, kind of funny thing is both of those are, are quested now, so that works out perfect. Uh, main reason I like to come this way, and there's actually another cave over here too. Totally, you know, okay to go in there. Um, no harm will come to you. You won't break quests or anything. Actually, in any of these. Um, even if you happen to hit this cave sooner, um, as long as you didn't pull out anything that said Amran's whatever sword, you're okay. If you just happen to go in here and kill a few bandits, it'll reset when, you, when you're given the quest. Okay, so enough about that. Now one more thing I want to show you is once you've got your map open here, go ahead and press the other button to get your quests open. You can actually do this while you're in the map. So say you're like, okay, well I want to do that, but I don't know where it is. You can hit that button there, show on map. And there, it'll take you right there. Now, this doesn't always work. Some of them intentionally don't want you to know. They want you to go search. And that's, far, you know, if just a far and few between. But sometimes, say, the quest is in Solstheim. And for whatever, the re for whatever the reason, it won't take you to Solstheim to show it to you. So keep that in mind. If it's just not taking you to where it needs to go, chances are pretty good you're either in Solstheim and the quest is on the mainland, or you're in mainland and the quest is in Solstheim. All right, guys, so enough about that. It's party time. So now I just crafted a whole bunch of potions. You probably saw in my last video about cooking and potions. And I leveled up, so um, I, I got two perk points going for me right now. The goal is five. I want one more for my alchemy. Need? 
at least. So yeah, one's going to go to alchemy, two are going to go into smithing, and two are going to go into enchanting, so I can do my next round of character leveling. So for right now, these quests are actually perfect. And now there's a whole bunch of loot and stuff, and there's a road, and you can follow this river. But I kind of already pre-looted that on my way to Whiterun, but if it's been a while for you, feel free to warp to the stables and just follow the road. Uh, plenty of flowers to pick along the way. There's some mud grab fun. Alright, got the time passed, and I can already see none of my flowers have respawned, so that's all good. Eh, I did leave some behind, so maybe I'll scoop up some stray stuff. But, um, yeah, so these farmers, you can always talk to the NPCs here and always sell something, and it's usually something you're growing. And you want to make sure you take the time to do that so you can make sure you get Thane oh, when you're you out and about in the different regions. What can I do? Oh, now, they, they won't something? all work, you know. Mm -hmm. It only works for some of them. This one has yes. absolutely no dialogue options. Oh, blue butterflies, guys. This is a daytime spawn, so make sure you're scooping those up so we can get our enchanting craft, uh, enchanting potions crafted up. And always keep a couple of everything in your inventory anyway, so if you do sell whatever, they're going to sell all of them. So say, you know, this NPC I find wants cabbage. After you're done selling, make sure you come back and scoop up a couple more cabbage, because if you find another NPC and they want cabbage and you don't have any, then you won't be able to do it. In fact, it won't even show you that dialogue option a lot of the time. All right, where is Farmer John? I know it's not Farmer Jane that I need to talk to. There should be another dude around here somewhere. If you're having trouble finding him, always just try passing another hour or something, and sometimes that'll, you know, they'll, they'll come around or they'll show themselves. Okay, now there's two of them out here. Good to go. Okay, so here we go. He wants two different things. So yeah, I'm going to sell the potatoes. And again, this just increases your standing in the hold. So everything you can sell to the locals, always sell stuff to the locals. What did I sell? Cabbage and potatoes? Can't even remember now. And also, you know, you might want to keep a few extra for cooking the, the meals and stuff that you can cook. Alright, so whatever I gave him, I'm sure I already got it back. Now these butterflies don't normally cook anything good, but you know, keep a couple of everything anyway. Uh, that gives you the opportunity to experiment a little bit when you're doing your alchemy. Alright guys, uh, you know, moving right along here, just going to kind of stick to the yellow brick road. Keep my keen eye open for any blue butterflies, and a lot of times when you see one type of butterfly, uh, take a quick look around, you might see the other. And wow, I'm getting hungry. It is one in the morning. It is way too late at night for me to be eating a bowl of frozen berries with vanilla ice cream and Hershey syrup on top. It's way too late at night for that. I'm telling you. Don't suppose you didn't shot if I ate that now, I would be a train wreck in bed tonight. No touchy. Okay, here's that Nemrut, and it actually respawned in my game, so booyah. Okay, crossing the bridge here. You can already see the icon on my compass. Kind of lighten up there. And every chance you get in combat, always pop something that you can summon. That's what really helps your your conjuration skill level. But you have to be in active combat, otherwise it doesn't bump. So sometimes if I know I'm about to find an enemy, I'll pop one, you know, preemptively. I just kind of spaced on that wolf there. Alright, so um, yeah, cave is right there on my compass. Ooh, dragon attack. Awesome. Good thing I got that flame astronaut popped. Come on, Poppy. Now, sometimes they won't actually en engage you unless you plug them with an arrow, and that's tough to do when they're flying. It's real hard to lead those shots and get them. And I don't think I was able to actually get his attention, so no more red dot on my compass. He's probably long gone. So yeah, you know, sometimes you'll just see them flying around, and you'll hear them, and it's just like, oh, okay, cool. See ya. And other times they'll come right after you. Alright, so again, first things first, um, take this little side path here, and again, there's enemies coming up, so I'm going to preemptively pop a 
flame astronaut for that reason. And I, I already had one out, but the, the timer on it resets after you pop a new one. Okay, now I, there's an enemy coming in a couple. That's why my sneak just went up there. No point in sneaking anymore. Still one-shotting bandits, so we're still in good shape, you know, combat power-wise. I always read the notes and stuff on these guys. You just never know. Sometimes they'll activate a quest. If it doesn't, sometimes it's just fun to read, you know. It kind of gives you some story as to what's going on in whatever uh, dungeon you're about to pop into. Okay, now I do better first person in combat, so I know there's that. I know there's that issue with motion sickness, but I'll try to minimize how much I give you whiplash at least. Okay, I did not one-shot him. He was a bit tougher. I thought there was another one here somewhere. Not seeing red dots anywhere, so apparently not. Alright, always do your looting. Lots of goodies around here too is in the way of flowers, you know. You guys are probably starting to see in my walkthrough now, uh, the overall walkthrough anyway, just how valuable uh, taking just those few extra seconds to grab your loose lootables is. You get crafting with these potions, you just do all your leveling, you do some selling. It's a great time. I always keep, you know, a few of everything, and honestly, I don't even know what I do and don't have anymore, so I'm just going to kind of grab a lot of stuff and probably, you know, bump myself up to about five of everything. That Frost Miriam was real good for potions, and so was that garlic. If you need the cooking station, feel free to use it to cook up a meal or whatever you might need. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cook a meal and demonstrate a couple of times. Hiccup time again. You know what would cure some hiccups? A nice big bowl of frozen strawberries with vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce on top. Guys, so I'm not going to cook a ton of these. It's just going to be kind of for demonstration purposes. Okay, so for now, yeah, I'll just do that one meal. So what I'll do is I'll do that, you know, in combat here when I get in the middle of it. Just to kind of show you. Uh, it, it does, you know, raise that rate a little bit. Oh, in addition to the... Check this out. So in addition to that one I just cooked, that home-cooked meal increases your health, magic, and stamina recovery. Now it doesn't say how much, but I'm actually going to favor that one and eat that one and compare that one for you to the crab stew there. Now that one tells you straight up what it does. Uh, so now, you know, I'm going to have to go into another menu to show you what that's doing. Alright guys, so before getting into any big fist fight, always save that game. In fact, I always recommend putting that save down before you go into the dungeon. So I'm going to do that right now and drop that hard save. This way, you know, if something's going wrong, the follower gets killed, just a number of things can happen. You've got a good solid save point. Say you get, you know... You're in there for an hour and a half and you're lost and you didn't want to go in there in the first place and you just want to go home. Uh, you can simply unlock that save and you are, you know, it's like it never happened. Here we go on into White Rush. Now before I ever go inside, because you never know what's going to be there to greet you, I always like to pop a flame astronaut preemptively just in case I find combat. It's already ready to rock and roll. I like to crouch, so I'm already sneaking. And I like to have my weapon at the ready. But he is an enemy, and, you know, once you get into combat here, he's going to come trying to kill you anyway, so... Uh, yeah, you might as well just go ahead and plug him while the plug-in is easy. And again, I like first person when I'm doing combat, guys, so bear with that whole motion sickness thing. Now, this cave in particular, a lot of times the barrels will have alchemy ingredients. So, you know, in addition to checking this stuff anyway, um, if you're ever in, like... A, a mage's cave in particular they are really good for you know stocking up with the alchemy ingredients uh, so you know some dungeons and caves are going to be better than others just bear that in mind now this one's also got a ton of mushrooms in it so i'm going to you know take the time to grab all the free lootables guys a lot of these mushrooms combine up and they make really good for selling 
potions, you know, for money, income, and also, wow, that's heavy. And also for, uh, you know, getting that alchemy bumped. All right, guys, moving on through. Now there should be, like, a couple more in here somewhere. And honestly, I don't think this is a real good dungeon to eat any meal at, but I will just because. So what I'll do is I'll do the crab stew for now. And then when I get to that other keep, that'll be a hairier fight. I'll do the, the other meal for that one. Okay, so now just to validate, you know, you can verify what you do and don't have working for you. Restore health, that's because of the crab stew. So there it tells you right there exactly how much time you have left, 11 minutes. So hey, my mental math was pretty good earlier. I said 12. And then I just, it seemed like it was too easy and I, I just thought I was wrong. So anyway, yeah, um, there it is. Uh, restore stamina, again, you know, it tells you not only what you're getting, but it tells you where it's coming from. I always look down into stuff like this. A lot of times there'll be a soul gem hiding in these. I mean, not a lot of times. Uh, they're pretty rare actually, but you know, you'd be surprised how many do you, you do find that way. Uh, sometimes there's also other goodies in there. Um, you know, it can be anything. It can be a little bit of gold just loosely thrown in there. You just never know. So I think you are pretty free to kind of wiggle around in here a little bit and do some collecting. Okay, again, alchemy ingredients still coming up in the barrels. Those imps still are real good for paralysis. And I think we're about to get into a bit of a nest. Now, popping this might actually alert. And it did not. Oh man, he's gonna see me. Yeah, I don't have my sneak skill up very good, so. Come on down! Oh, he's got a bow. He ain't messing. Come on, Poppy. Okay, they don't hurt real bad anyway. I got pretty decent armor on. See, so yeah, you're pretty survivable in here. Just notice, you know, compared to normal gameplay, um, you know, that stamina bar when I normally do it without, and what it's doing now, so it's noticeably faster. Um, you know, it doesn't just fill it right back up right away, but, um, you know, and again, that stacks with other things. That stacks with certain perks you can do. Uh, that stacks with a potion you could drink. So if you were really, really wanting a ton of stamina, just completely, you know, at your disposal the whole time, and it's just super fast in the recharging, you know, whether or not that's because you're doing power attacking with one-handed weapons or doing, you know, the bow stuff. Um, whatever the case may be, just keep in mind, you can do the meal and stack that with a potion. And you can either craft or buy those potions that do the faster stamina regeneration. Okay, no need to sleep anymore since we got our lever stone activated, but if you didn't, try to sleep every chance you get. That also gives you a leveling increase. Uh, for a limited time, I think it's 24 hours in Skyrim, so whatever that is. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's better than baseline, so I always recommend doing that. I always check the loose weapons, too, to see if anything is enchanted. Uh, same thing goes for clothing items. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for in here. I don't think I found a gourd yet, so that's new. The more... I'll always read those books, Explorer's Guides to Skyrim. They'll always open up a new spot on your maps. So you saw me grab that girl's dress. At some point I'm going to adopt kids, so I'll keep a boy's clothes and girl's clothes for now. They're, they're not heavy. Uh, and I grab that straw again for house building when the time comes. Straw, goat horns, glass, 
start getting the you know getting them earlier game because when you do the, the house building wowzers it really calls for some of that stuff okay so I guess I'm done Yeah, there's definitely baddies in there, so I'm going to pop another Flame Astronaut here in just a second. Okay, same thing with the child's doll. You can actually give your kids gifts, you know, and the, the, the clothes count too, and it gives you ben uh, buffs. Everything in this game's got a purpose. Okay, you might want to go ahead and drop a a soft save here. You think it worked? All right, so now there should be three if memory serves. Again, it's been a minute. Are both not a chance. Right. I always try to plug the furthest away. Notice I got one right smack dab here in front of me. Don't do that because they're all going to come running to her. So what I do instead is plug one farther away. So notice that guy up there just standing still, nice and pretty, posing for the camera. He's dead meat. Once he's dead meat, okay, now they came after... I thought they were coming after me. I was like, wait a minute, that shouldn't be happening. So notice exactly where they're all going. That not only gets you to come away from them, but it also shows you how many they're dealing with. And it gives you a second to kind of get yourself realigned and see how you want to attack the fight. So now the archers are usually tricky. There's, uh... Yeah, I knew he was waiting for me. Okay, now I don't want to activate that pull chain yet, just yet. I think that lets all the wolves out. Okay, so for now I'm done with combat. Loot's gonna start getting better and better, guys. The more we level... Uh, the better the, the stuff is. You know, that's one thing I really liked about this game is it was never boring. Okay, I should have stayed in single person, I guess, for this. It was just always awesome, you know? The, the fact that everything leveled, you know, you do side quests in the beginning of the game, you're lucky to get 50 gold, but, you know, you start leveling, then it's 100 gold, then it's, you know, several hundred gold, then it's like 750 gold, then it's like some, you know, thousand something for doing quests. It just it just keeps on going. All right, so once you're done getting all your free collectibles there, don't forget to do your your looting of your corpses. Fine clothes. What were those valued at? Not much. Still getting alchemy ingredients, beautiful thing. Alright guys, so I think I'm pretty much squared away. I got all my loose lootables. Uh, continuing on now, this is a good time to pop that flame astronaut. We're about to exit cave and, um, you know, save that game. There's a baddie out there waiting for us and from what I remember he was pretty tough. And I just realized my bow completely ran out of charge. I'm going to be doing some crafting here for new bows real soon, so I don't want to dump a bunch of soul gems into that to recharge it. But I should probably go ahead and dump something into it, just for the time being. Yep, it pains me to dump soul gems into weapons this early in the game, because I'd rather enchant with them to get my skill up. But the funny thing is, actually, when you do recharge your weapons, that also goes toward your enchanting skill. Okay, there he is, right where he should be. Now notice, I popped that flame astronaut a while ago, and I didn't get a bump in conjuration. That didn't happen until I got involved in active combat. Now sometimes I'll shoot the body over the cliff, so that's a lot of fun trying to find him. But normally he's got some pretty good loot, so it's worth your while to check his body. I always take the journals 
and I store them at home just in case I come across some obscure quest and they say, hey, I'm looking for so-and-so's journal. Then I go back through my chest and see if I've actually already got it. Oh, it's a great sword. Never mind! You will never, ever see me wield a great sword in this game. Actually, I take that back. There's one time you have to to get out of a dungeon. But besides that, I will never, ever wield a, <laughs> a great sword in this game. Alright guys, so don't forget your loot chest here. This is actually usually pretty good too. Good early game spot. So now this is what I mean. Do not pick this thing up ever. Any kind of named weapon, shield, uh, armor piece, uh, unless you specifically have a quest telling you to do so. So now we are actually safe to grab our sword. That clears the quest once we get back to the quest giver. Ooh, amulets, guys. Always grab the amulets. I'm telling you, these are tough to get. So um, I usually buy them when I see them, too, because you need those for house building and other things. Staff of the Familiar. Now, I've already gotten the Flame Astronaut staff from my follower, um, but I think it's actually out because I haven't seen them cast one this whole time. So that must be out of power. So for the time being, I'm actually going to give this, them this one so that at least they can cast a Familiar. Now, this is normally the first uh, Conjuration staff you'll find in your game. And honestly, it's not super powerful, but it is fun. Uh, and it's actually kind of cool. It reminded me a little bit of Harry Potter. Ooh, I got that. That's a good find, guys. They only weigh a pound. They need to be disenchanted, first of all. So, you know, you want to do the earlier game stuff for that. Because the, the higher level those get, the more expensive they sell for. Again, it only weighs a pound. Alright, guys. So now you can actually go back out the way we came. Uh, you know, go back through the cave. It's cleared now. Or you can fast travel from this point. 